Good morning, Vlogmas Day 5, and look, my sewing space is almost set. Okay, so I have set up just a table, and I have my machine and my serger set up side by side, and then I put my cutting mat in the middle because I have to cut some stuff, and I also brought up my parchment paper so I can trace a pattern. And then I've just got my little set of patterns here with um, the storage bin underneath that still has some really thick fabrics in it. And then I showed you guys this the other day. So what shall I make? What shall I make? So exciting. So I've got this Jolly pattern for a robe that I got at the Creative Festival and the Melanie. And the nice thing about Jolly patterns is that they go like right way from kid size all the way up to adult size. And uh, I wanna get a start on the robes for the girls. Not classic maybe, but I think, I think it'll go really well. So I'm going to trace those out. Okay, so before I start sewing, I am going to bake my bread. And I told you guys that I would show you how, so here we go. So I start off with one cup of water in my mixer. You can do it in a bowl. You don't need to use the mixer. Um, I've even seen people do it in a food processor, but I have it, so I may as well use it. So I have a cup of water in here, and this cup of water is like bath water. So it's nice and warm and cozy, but it's not so hot that you can't keep your finger in it, that you have to like pull your finger right out when you um, test the water, and it needs to be warm enough so that it activates the yeast. So you need two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. In my experience, what kind of yeast does not matter? Um, and you can just use one of those sachets if you don't have the glass. And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna start with two cups of flour. Now, you'll see some bread bakers are very particular about measuring flour and weighing it. And I can get really finicky like that, but in general, I find that for me, dough matters more what it looks like, not um, the exact measurements. Okay, so I'm gonna start just giving this a little mix with the dough hook. And now I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of salt. And now I'm slowly gonna add the second cup of water. So you have two cups of water, two and a half tea or two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, about two teaspoons of salt. And in the end, we're gonna end up with about four cups of flour, approximately. So I'm gonna give that a little stir. I'm gonna add a third cup of flour. Okay, so now that's all incorporated and it's a little bit wet because I've only done three and a bit cups of flour. And so now I'm gonna slowly add uh, a little more flour and keep the mixer to keep turning the mixer on so that um, what you end up with is a nice smooth dough that is pulling away from the sides that's not sticking to the sides but that's also not dry and clumpy the reason why i can't give you exact measurements is because dough very much depends on humidity so if you're in a very dry place or a very humid place it changes so it's more important for you to learn what it should look like rather than what the exact measurements are Okay, so now you can see that the dough is all in one clump. It's not dry and flaky. It's not super wet and sticking to the sides of the bowl. This is the right amount of flour. This is approximately four cups. This is about what the normal recipe would be. And now I'm gonna leave this on, on like two, four, five minutes. Okay, so this is done. I'm just going to Pull it, use a wet hand to pull it off the dough hook. Okay, 
So you can see that when I push on it, it kind of bounces back, not like a huge amount, but a little bit kind of thing. And it's nice and it's smooth. It sticks just a tiny bit, but I'm not getting it all over my hands. And so this now is ready to proof. I like to put a little bit of olive oil on the outside of the bowl and just take the dough and make it into just a little ball folding in the ends so you get that nice round surface. Give it a couple of twists like this. Okay. And there you go. You've got a beautiful ball of dough. There's a little on the bottom here. So I put this in here, I just rise in, in, in here, you can do it in a bowl, and then you want to cover it with either a, wet, a damp cloth or I like to cover it with saran wrap. This press and seal stuff is one of my very favorite things. Okay, dough ready, and now I'm going to put this beep in my oven because I have a proof setting. If you don't have a proof setting, just put it somewhere warmish. Um, I've even heard of people putting it in the dryer, like after they use the dryer, they leave it in there. So whatever, um, it needs to sit. So I'm going to leave this most of the day because I'm making this for knitting night tonight. Um, so this is going to rise for quite a while. It needs at least an hour until it doubles in size. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And yeah, that's most of the work to make bread. So I've started tracing out the robes. I'm gonna do that in stages, because of course that's the most boring part. <laughs> so I'm gonna fill it in with fun stuff. Um, I was looking more at this pattern that I'd kind of forgotten about, and I've seen a couple people make it, and it's quite nice. You can see it has that ruching right kind of around the torso, which I like, because I'm, I'm not so big. I mean, I'm gonna say I don't like my stomach, but you know, I've had two kids. I'm in my 40s, it's not really where I wanna focus. I'd rather focus on other areas. <laughs> Um, I have this navy blue. It looks black here, but if you compare it to the underside that is black, it's definitely navy blue. And it's a thin scuba. Um, and I got it on sale at Fabricland and it's pretty opaque, which is good. Um, and it's quite lightweight. So I think it will actually work for that. And I think that could just be a great kind of wear all the time dress, even though it looks fancier in the pictures, I think you can make it more of a everyday cozy dress and I might even lengthen it and make it longer so I can use it to, to, um, to cozy up and it's nice and soft. Here's a little tip when I'm tracing patterns, I like to use the edges of the paper to count for at least one, sometimes two of the edges of the pattern piece and that way that's less for me to cut. Okay, ready to cut um, my pattern weights are still in storage. So iPad as pattern weight. Um, you can kind of see here better how it's navy and not black. So I think I'm gonna be able to get the whole dress just out of this one length because the way I fold my fabric is I just fold it as far enough over as I need to get the pattern in and that leaves me a space in the middle to cut the sleeves. Yoga check. Okay, so my dough has fully risen and I'm now gonna punch it down using this. And this dough is enough to do either one very large loaf of bread, two smaller loaves of bread. It is great as pizza dough. Just add a little bit of olive oil to it as you're doing this second rise. And, um, but for my, for my purposes, I'm gonna divide this into two loaves so that uh, I can have one loaf for home and one to bring to knitting night. So you can see that I divided the dough into two and I rolled it into two separate balls, turning it and sealing the ends like I did before I um, let it rise. And then these need about another half an hour to puff up a bit. I'm going to set my oven to 450. Okay, so these have puffed up nicely. I put them on a tray and they are 
going in a 450 oven. And I've also put a pan of water. I don't know if you can see that from there. I put a pan of water in there, but a cup and a half to two cups of water, and that will allow a little bit of steam to be created and make a nice crust. And I'm gonna set a 30 minute timer to start. Okay, so they are looking good. They need a little longer though, so I can tell by the color that they're kind of already quite brown. If yours aren't already quite brown, you can leave them at the same temperature, but I'm gonna turn mine down to 400 and I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes. In my opinion, it needs 45 minutes, pretty much no matter what. And yeah, we'll let those go a little longer. Okay, here they are out of the oven on the baking rack. And if you look on the bottom, they're nice. And if you give them a tap, they should sound, or do it one hand, they should sound hollow. That's how you know that it's cooked all the way through. And so one for the family and one for knitting night. Careful. Very careful, mother. Yes, daughter. C'est très belle. C'est très belle. Très beau. Des toiles, très belle. Okay, I am on my way to knitting night with the ladies in my neighborhood that I started about four years ago now, so it's so lovely how it's continued on. I'm wearing my everyday shawl that I have steam blocked, but not fully blocked. Um, I'll show a fuller version on my regular vlog, and I'm also wearing my new socks. So I think I'm gonna start a new pair of socks tonight. I tried to start Audrey's sweater three times, and three times I have got it wrong, so. I'm gonna to have to really, really focus to start that. So I'm just gonna start something for fun and uh, socks are easy and fun and mindless. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, bye.